Hello and welcome back everybody to the Food Build Factory where today we're going to take a look at the Zeke Invader. That's the alien guy you can see on screen right now. And as always I'm going to show you some gameplay in the first part of the video and in the latter half of the video we're going to take a look at all the perks, the mutations and everything you need to know about the character. Now this character was kind of a uh, my take on well basically making the uh, the unique legendary alien blaster that you get in the game like being a good weapon now first thing I gotta say about the build is that the uh, unique alien blaster the uh, vets unknown as it's called basically every alien blaster got a bit of a buff lately um, to be more precise I think it was at around the time of patch 23 I think yeah that should be the right time and what the uh, developers did they added like 20% more base damage to the weapon which I mean it doesn't sound like all that much but actually it's it's quite noticeable um, there's a big difference now and overall I gotta say um, the alien blaster was always kind of this cursed weapon not like cursed weapon in the in the terms of um, you know where we're actually having weapons of the game that are called cursed weapons but uh, cursed in a sense that it was always kind of a very iconic staple of the Fallout uh, franchise now in pretty much at least in every Bethesda title of the franchise the alien blaster was a thing and it was always very powerful now I can even remember seeing that it was a thing in Fallout 2 or Fallout 1 and well, it doesn't matter any anyhow. Um, the weapon just underperforms a little bit in in Fallout 76, and that's probably due to the fact that um, gunslinger weapons in general have a quite a bunch of problems. Now, first and foremost, most of them aren't suitable for vets, so you can't really make up for their low base damage. Then, furthermore, the fact that um, Gunslinger weapons do use all uh, like nine points of uh, n nine points of perk investment in agility is a big letdown simply because agility is such a good um, is such a good uh, stat in this game filled with very good perks like adrenaline and and such that yeah having like nine points preoccupied just because they're necessary for your build is not a good thing let's say that way and well what I found out is that actually I'm I was kind of surprised um, the weapon is actually pretty good now the thing is that <coughs> excuse me uh, other than a lot of the uh, the gunslinger weapons in this game um, the alien blaster is completely silent so you can easily pull off um, a sneak character with it, which is actually the way you should definitely go with this weapon. And furthermore, now the unique legendary version, the Vets Unknown, is a medics uh, alien blaster with better vet crits and vet crits filling faster, meaning the weapon is perfectly uh, suitable for vets. Now. The medic's effect, especially since we're doing a stealth character, isn't all that much use for us because we're trying to avoid damage anyhow, so we don't really need to fill up our health bar. But the combination of better vets criticals and faster filling vets criticals is very potent. Now, as you saw already, we do get quite a lot of uh, shots in vets, so we can easily use the uh, weapon completely uh, in the vet system and furthermore what, what's kind of cool is that it actually has a very great fire rate now the thing is what you're doing with this build is you're basically throwing ammo at enemies now don't get me wrong the weapon is still not good in a way it's it's still lackluster especially if you're fighting well Super mutants are still kind of fine, but yeah, when 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 it comes to enemies like um, glowing uh, level 70 ghouls, for example, or 
uh, Yao Guai and such, you really see that the weapon damage, the low damage, takes its hit. Like, the thing is, pretty much every enemy you can take down successfully in one VATS round, meaning that you're shooting the weapon until all your uh, action points are used up. And if you're not able to kill off enemies in that time, you're down for a problem. Now, as you can see here, we're not having that much of a trouble with lower level enemies. It's actually a lot of fun to use the weapon. Um, it has its very unique um, sound. That's the most notable thing about it. And yeah, if you're using it in first person, it's it's great. It still feels and sounds and plays like the Alien Blaster you know from other games. It just lacks a bit of damage. However, it does kind of make up for it with its great DPS. As you can see here, you're just basically firing bursts of, of uh, like fusion cells all the time. Now, one thing to notice that I'm completely uh, using a completely unmodified uh, version of the gun except for the uh, fusion mag. Now, there's a way to get a plan to uh, convert the ammo for the weapon from the alien blaster rounds to fusion cells and that makes the weapon way weaker I think we're talking about, um, with all the damage perks equipped, I was doing like around 40 damage at the moment. And with the uh, standard mech, which uses alien blaster rounds, I could go up to 40, uh, 54 damage, which is a very significant difference. But <coughs> the problem is that you can't actually craft uh, alien blaster rounds, other than, you know, you can, I think craft every single ammo type in the game except for those and they're not really easily farmable either now there's one place as far as I know on the map where you can find them but when you get there there's like eight rounds or something so there's just no way that with server hopping or anything you could get a large amount of them now the daily ops that were recently introduced kind of give you a way to farm them reliably I wanna say so I guess I haven't tried it because I just I, I don't have the I, I have like 12 alien blaster rounds or something so that wouldn't be enough but I'd say once you're getting like a hundred alien blaster rounds or something you could probably try to um, farm the alien blaster rounds in the daily ops by just killing enemies and Killing them over and over and taking their ammo all the time that they drop, that should probably work. The thing is, uh, you don't want to focus on uh, finishing the uh, finishing the the daily ops within the eight minutes time frame or something. You want to take your time. Like uh, as long as you basically don't get bored or your weapon doesn't break, you can do this. And yeah, I I guess you could probably. Uh, therefore rely on using alien blast rounds having a bit more damage but honestly I think it wouldn't be worth the trouble so that's why I just went with the fusion mag and uh, it actually worked good enough so I can say um, we don't need the better wets rounds uh, the better uh, alien blast rounds now the only thing this uh, build heavily relies on is first and foremost we're heavily relying on vets and vets criticals to be more precise and the other thing is that we do actually uh, run with quite some legendary perks and we do use um, two different consumables on a regular basis we're talking about corn soup and blight soup now both of them are very easy to come by and they hold for uh, their buff uh, is active for 30 minutes so over the whole video I'm not going to have to uh, reuse them as for the legendary perks now I guess you can uh, pull that build off without them but this definitely isn't the char character you wanna try to do on your first try or something this is more of a challenge build so to speak yeah we're not quite uh, 
hitting quite hard enough to out damage its healing, but yeah, I just uh, yeah back to the topic. I just wanted to say that I did use uh, quite some legendary perks, making it all easier. The whole process of recording a video and yeah, I, I wanted to show off how good you can do with this weapon. And yeah, that, there's definitely still room for improvement. Like for example. Um, I'm only having rank 2, I think, of um, follow-through. You know, that's the legendary perk that gives you extra damage, uh, in uh, extra sneak attack damage. And uh, after your follow-up shots, which you do do a lot of follow-up shots with this weapon, so the perk is very powerful. So, you could rank it up to rank 5, I think. And that would significantly boost your damage output. So there's that. You can still get way more damage than I do here. Now, back to the build. What you really need to do too is you need to have a good um, source of fusion cells. You're burning through them like crazy. Um, I'm I'm talking about a realm of like when we're done with the video, we're probably gonna have burnt through like. Yeah, something like 3,000 fusion cells, probably. Meaning that... Yeah, if you wanna use this character for a while, I guess you need like 10 to 20,000 fusion cells, at least, to start off. And not having to worry about it all the time. But... If you can have all these criteria, or meet all these criteria, um, the weapon is actually a lot of fun. Now, as you saw here, we are definitely in caution all the time like the weapon is completely silent there's just no way around it now I am aware that I just pretty much said negative things about the weapon for like 10 minutes straight at this point but it has its upsides too like first and foremost the build is very easy on the micromanagement meaning that um, yeah, we basically never have trouble with rats. Um, we n very, very rarely have to take a uh, stim pack because the few hits we're taking from, you know, random shots here and there are pretty much meaningless because unless an enemy really uh, detects us and damages us uh, a lot, we're always constantly healing uh, ourselves off simply by using our weapon as it's supposed to, meaning doing red crits. Now, one individual wet red uh, crit doesn't really heal all that much damage, but uh, that doesn't really matter because we're like we're getting crits on every third shot, I think. Obviously, every third successful shot, but yeah. Now, another thing I wanted to say is that the weapon uh, has actually very good range if you're having the uh, long barrel equipped, which I had when I transferred it to this character here. But since its condition is going down fairly fast, not exactly because the weapon itself breaks fast, but you're just having to use so much shots, I toned down and used the standard barrel for the simple reason that it gave us a little bit of a bigger condition bar and we're still having a range of 120 which just felt enough for my means <coughs> like range of 120 it's fine we're, we're using it in like mid-range anyways we're always sneaking so we can get in pretty easily meaning that the range drop-off isn't all that bad now Another thing I wanted to say is that I'm heavily overusing fusion cells because I'm stupid. You, there's just no way to say that anything anywhere else. Like, you probably even noticed most of the times enemies would go down in a few shots. And what I did with this character is simply, yeah, I learned to just spam. And as the projectiles have quite some travel time, they're... Alright. Um, yeah, the, the projectiles, they don't... Um, they aren't hit scan. They don't hit the moment you're pulling the trigger, but they actually have some 
travel time to them, if you can see here. Now, that means that with this fast fire rate, if your enemy is at a bit of a range, by the time your projectiles hit an enemy, uh, you already... you can easily have fired like 10 shots or something, meaning that if the enemy just takes four to five shots to take down <coughs> excuse me by the way still a bit sick uh, if the enemy just takes like two to five shots you're basically wasting ammo now this doesn't drain your condition but it doesn't actually help with your ammo problem either so as it's a, a thing so, uh, every so often in my videos um, if this build would be run by someone who actually had some gaming skills, uh, you can expect a lot more of it. Now, as you can see here, going against a bigger target, we still don't really have a trouble winning the fight for the simple reason that we're invisible, more more or less. But yeah, we, we just want to wait every now and then. Now, we can finish it off with free aim, which is fun too, but we're missing out on quite a lot of DPS. I'd say like... Actually, half of all the damage we're doing comes from criticals. Now, a as a vague reference, um, if we're fighting a ghoul, we're, with a headshot we do like 50 damage without a crit, and we're doing about 150 damage with a crit. Um, just from what I've seen, there was no specific testing behind it, but that's just what I gathered. So yeah criticals really help us a lot w the critical shots can get a lot of damage now know what let's show that off now we do have follow through active so our consecutive shots do more damage but they shouldn't increase now so okay this is a standard shot 56 damage now we're doing a crit and 116 now keep in mind this weapon uh, this enemy is way heavily, uh, way more heavily armored than a ghoul, so that makes quite a lot of difference. But as you saw here, we're doing easily double the damage, and well, I, I don't want to take on uh, West Tech. By the way, it's uh, time to end the uh, thing, the uh, gameplay part of the video here. I think I've shown off quite a bit. Now, uh, sadly we didn't have any robots that we could kill, but um, they're actually going down pretty easily since their weak spots are very weak. And now that I remember, yeah, we, we took down some robots. So, yeah, th that's that. Um, that was the gameplay. I hope I didn't talk too much nonsense, and yeah. Let's get into the build itself. Now, here's the weapon I already uh, told you. Now, as a reference, um, I actually repaired the weapon to 200% condition right before we started the video. So, as you can see here, uh, over the time of the video, I burned through like, uh, yeah, pretty much exactly half the condition here. I mean, it's not terrible. Uh, it's not unusable. It's just going to need some maintenance. Now, what you can easily do here is use multiple versions. Now, the Vets Unknown is a fixed reward, so meaning you could easily get it on five different characters if you're running them. Um, furthermore, the weapon isn't expensive. Like, I bought this one for 4,000 caps in a player vending machine, and I definitely saw them go for way less. Like, I saw them for 1,000 caps or something. Um, no, one, no one really likes those weapons, and one thing is for sure, if you're using it, you'll be the only player that other players see that day using a bl alien blaster for good reasons they're just ammo consuming and such but yeah um <coughs> actually kind of surprising here uh now that i look at my fusion cells i started the video with around 6200 so we burned through only 400 energy cells fusion cells which actually i feel isn't all that bad and by the way, I see we do use a sharpshooter script. Um, I'm not sure. I thought I used the standard uh, weaponry, but yeah, the, the sharpshooter script is probably a mod for it. So yeah, that's that. But to be fair, mod it like you want to. 
Um, I, I definitely advise you to use the uh, uh, long barrel. I just didn't want to swap the weapon back to my main character in order to mod it and then swap it back again. So, yeah, that's that. Now, onto apparel. We are running a set of chameleon armor, which is partly broken. Here's a broken piece. One star. Not a one star piece. Not a one star piece. Then we do have one more piece here. And I think we actually don't even have a, a chest piece on. Um, as for the under armor, I went for sheeted, uh, shielded road ladders, uh, simply for extra perception and agility. It's, in my opinion, the best uh, under armor, like all the radar under armor for a sneak character. And yes, that's about it. Now, onto the perks. Here we see Martial Artist, which uh, Bentley and Tremel Pharmacy. Now, two or three of those points are uh, from legendary perks and the complete strength tree is filled with convenience perks now if you want to do this build and don't want to use uh, legendary perks you can easily <coughs> reduce the strength down to one if you can manage the, the weight on your character that's a thing you can totally pull off you don't need a lot of stim packs you don't have to tr uh, uh, use them you don't need any ballistic ammo whatsoever so you don't need bandolier either and martial artists believe it or not I actually had it on for the uh, weight reduction because I had a lot of weight problems on this character so yeah uh, the complete strength 3 is unnecessary here it's just uh, yeah for my convenience so I can use the character now onto perception here it starts to get important now tank killer one of the most important uh, perks for this build more armor penetration the stagger isn't all that uh, impressive, but the armor penetration is really worth it here. Now, um, sorry. Now, uh, guns have relatively low base damage. Our weapon especially has low da base damage, meaning it has a hard time penetrating armor and every percentage point helps. So 36% more uh, armor penetration is a must have on this character. Crack shot more range and accuracy well sighted arguably unnecessary like we're not using the weapon uh, with free aim at all but you can you can equip a uh, scope on it so y you can try a little bit and we want to have high perception anyways so it doesn't hurt now feel free to leave that out yet again one of those perks you don't necessarily need it's just nice to have there because it's pistol related and sometimes maybe you could use it. Concentrated fire at rank 3, this is yet again necessary. Now you could pull it off with rank 1, but yet again we want to have a lot of uh, perception in order to have a good vets hit chance and therefore concentrated fire, fire is a natural pick to be at 3, increasing our uh, uh, accuracy even more with every shot we're taking. Now. As we're taking multiple shots to enemies, yeah, it's just going better and meaning that after our third or fourth hit, every hit is a 95% a hit chance. And last but not least, um, yet again to have more perception, I actually used glow sight simply because uh, we had the room for it and having a low base damage weapon, yeah, it kind of doesn't hurt, especially since you're, uh, when you're going against glowing ghouls and such. They can be a pain in the ass, and 60% extra damage to them really helps. Now, onto Endurance. Yet another perk that could easily go down to 1, to rank 1, but I had it at 4. A bit of a safety net if we're getting detected, like, it helps us getting at least, uh, surviving at least 2 to 3 shots. But ultimately, uh, you would be better off to use those uh, points somewhere else. But yeah, I had access to the legendary perks so I could do some things like this here and there. However, cam feed is actually very nice. I didn't use cams in the video, but especially if you're going against tougher enemies, yeah, it, it doesn't hurt to, to have another extra boost from Psycho Tets or uh, Overdrive just to boost your damage a little bit more and having 100% longer lasting cams is a nice thing to have. That's probably enough so that one single uh, Psycho Tets or Overdrive, they even stack as far as I remember, 
uh, will last you a whole fight. They they will last up to like eight minutes or five minutes or something. So yeah, it, it just helps to keep your uh, consumption of camps down. And cola nut, well, it's just nice to have for the simple reason that same as camping. If you're fighting against tougher foes, uh, actually the the AP refresh from Nuka Cola can be great. Now, meaning if you're going against a Scorch Piece or something, you just constantly want to hit it in vets. Chug a uh, Nuka Cola Quantum, and you're back to uh, complete full AP in no time at all. Charisma for Long Wanderer for it's it's a thing with my builds. It's it happens very often. Now. I do use a lot of solo play. I, I tried some some support builds and such here and there, but I'm having a hard time finding someone to record with and you know I don't know how to show off how effective the support would be. So yeah, oftentimes I go for for a lone wanderer build and the the perk is just nice. Now I am aware that um there's combinations of the um uh, of uh, mutations and uh, group perks that you can use in a public team on your private server but yeah I just like the the Lone Wanderer theme and it's just a nice overall perk now especially the AP regen is very helpful on our build here we constantly wanna be in wets and therefore everything that helps us getting more AP and faster AP regen is always a win now as I said condition kinda kinda harsh on this weapon it can go down pretty fast and unless you're having two versions of the gun or actually three or something that you can carry around um, I definitely recommend using gunsmith here and batteries included now arguably it's not specifically necessary uh, fusion cells aren't the heaviest uh, ammo type in the world but yeah, I found having it on was a real good help, simply because I had more than that on, especially uh, uh, plasma cartridges. So yeah, rank 3 of batteries included. Also giving us a nice 8 intelligence, which is debuffed by our marsupial uh, per, uh, mutation, but well. Agility of 15, uh, there's no way, way around it, you want as much a a agility as possible. And yeah, this is where you have to make a lot of compromise. Now, ideally, what I was, uh, what I'm talking about, you wouldn't like to have all three ranks of gunslinger maxed out to three, covered operative, sneak, escape artist. Then you would like to have adrenaline, gun fu would be a nice pick. There's just so much perks that could be very cool. Um, another one is, where is it? Do I even have it on this character? I'm not sure. Um, nah. It's this... It's another pistol bullet that helps you giving give you a chance to cripple enemies. Now, if you would like... If you would have to use all the perks that would benefit this build greatly, you'd need like 25 agility or something. It's kind of crazy. So, what I went for here was... Gunslinger, Expert Gunslinger at rank 3, Master Gunslinger at rank 2. We're just missing out on 5% compared to the max damage, so that's something we can afford. Uh, covered Operative, this is a must-have. Extra sneak attack multipliers are always great. Escape Artist, one of the best perks for sneak. And then Sneak 3. Now, what you could do here is you could actually get rid of sneak, probably. Your weapon is completely silent, you're having a lot of agility. If you have the right armor, meaning like, yeah, five weightless pieces or yeah, probably even more beneficial, five chameleon pieces and uh, ideally maybe three pieces with better sneak, you could probably pull this build off without sneak and use gun fu or uh, adrenaline. However, that's something I'm not sure on, so that's up to you. Let me know if you try it and, and how it works out, but yeah, I went for a sneak just to have the safety net. I rather take some more time to take down an enemy than having uh, a bit more damage but being detected more often. And on to our second most important stat here, that's luck. <coughs> now, Bloody Mess, on this occasion quite powerful for the simple reason that 
Yeah, um, the weapon doesn't have any mods that boost its damage, so I guess rather, no matter if you're using the standard mech that uses alien blaster rounds, or you're using the fusion cell mech, that's all the damage you get off, out of your weapon. There's no better receivers or anything, so bloody mess gives you an extra, I, I think I checked it, it was like 10 or 12 extra damage. Uh, for us and that's significant enough to justify using three ranks here. I mean, that's yeah, that's quite a lot And yeah, I think I, I just overreacted here with 12 points of damage, but yeah, it, it was Substantial enough. So I said I want to have bloody mess on this character now better criticals and critical savvy This combination here is just an absolute must-have for our vets character um Critical Savvy combined with our uh, legendary effects on the weapon makes it so that every third shot is a critical hit. And better criticals, now all of our damage comes from criticals. We're doing everything to boost them. We're using uh, consumables to boost the uh, uh, crit damage. We're using this perk here. We're having a legendary effect on our weapon that boosts it. Now our weapon, uh, our build stands and falls with criticals so better criticals is just a must-have here and on to the last two for two ones starch genes now starch genes we want to have our mutations we don't want to get any unnecessary mutations so it's a must-have and grim reaper sprint at rank two now ideally if you could make room for it or could max up your luck to uh, 15 or 14 obviously max out grim reaper sprint especially if we're going against hordes it just means we're having to, uh, we're using less time to uh, wait for our AP to refill. It can proc very often. What it does is that when you kill an enemy, you have a chance to instantly refill all your uh, AP, and it's just a blessing if it happens. Now you can instantly move on with uh, with fighting, and yeah, that's a great thing. The more uh, often that happens, the more the better. So. This was it for our standard perks, and now we're going to take a look at our legendary perks here. They're kind of heavily focused on um, improving special stats, so none of them by 5 or something, but yeah. Let's start with here, uh, rank two, 2 ranks of perception. Going back, that was, yeah, you could go uh, get rid of Crackshot easily. No need to have this perk, get rid of Crackshot. Just, yeah, you, you won't need to see a big of a difference. It's just very situational. Follow through. Obviously, this one is is very important. Rank 4 of it, you want to have it sooner or later. This is probably the legendary perk you should finish first. If you're trying to recreate the character. This is a tremendous help for our character. There's just no way to say it differently. What reds now? Uh, absolutely unnecessary, but I found that even rank 1 of it is... If you're like me and have kind of this OCD that you always want to have... Yeah, it's kind of bothering me even if I just have like... 5 points of red, da red damage or something, but... Seeing this red... Kind of thing on your health bar all the time is... Just unnerving. It's... It's something I'm obviously used to. I mean, I play a lot of this game and uh, yeah, I just can't take a red away all the time. But yeah, it's kind of triggering me and with what reds, yeah, you very rarely have to use a red away or something. It's just a convenience perk, to be honest. Now, legendary luck. We are used three ranks here. Um, yeah, there, there's no way around it. I said it, uh, you can make room up to eight points in, in strength that you don't need to use. They don't have anything to do with the build, they were just there because I needed them to have more carry weight. So take three of them away and use them for luck to get up to 13 like I did here with legendary luck. Legendary agility, yeah, same. Now legendary strength, you don't have that, you still have five strengths left and this five strength you can use for here, this here agility and luck to make up for it. Now I hope you enjoyed the build. Um, yeah, sorry. Last thing I wanted to show off here is our mutations. We have Bird Bones, Chameleon, Eagle Eyes, Herbivore, Marsupial, Speed Demon, and Unstable Isotope. 
The unnecessary ones, Chameleon and Unstable Isotope, they're leftovers from other builds, but they don't have a negative effect, so I just didn't bother to remove them, because there's no way to specifically remove single uh, mutations in this game, so I would have to take a chance-based uh, approach and probably would have deleted some uh, mutations I wanted, so yeah, I just left them in there. What you really want is Bird Bones, Eagle Eyes, Herbivore, uh, Herbivore Marsupial and Speed Demon. Speed Demon, Marsupial, they're pretty standard, more movement speed, bigger jump height, more carry weight, um, better reload time, yeah, th these are just not particularly useful for our character, but just in general they are useful. Now, the ones that are really useful for our character are Bird Bones, Eagle Eyes and Herbivore. Bird Bones, extra agility, means we can sneak way better. Eagle Eyes, extra crit damage yet again, extra perception. The perception is nice, but the crit damage is the real focus on uh, that we're having here. Now, another 25% extra crit damage is really nice to have. There's just no way around it. If you want to use this weapon, Eagle Eyes is the way to go. And last but not least, Herbivore. Now, it's not necessary, and if you feel like you're someone who constantly wants to use buffs from meat or something then yeah obviously not take it but as I said there's two easy food items that you can easily craft in masses or well masses but you can easily sustain a substantial amount of it and that is corn soup which is very easy to make you just need boiled water and corn which you can plant at your camp and the other one is blight soup blight soup now, you need to find Blight out in the wild, but there's quite some fixed locations, and after all, the buffs from those uh, uh, from those items last for half an hour, so it's not like you have to constantly use them or something. And what they do is, I'm gonna show you here, I take one Corn Soup, take one Blight Soup, go back to effects. Now, as you can see, Blight Soup for 29 minutes, restores two action points which is just the initial thing but now you can see it gives us an another 40% crit damage this is immense now standard is that it gives you 20% extra crit damage which is already very nice but keep in mind our herbivore mutation gives us double results from um, every plant based buff so yeah extra 40% crit damage yet again very useful um, you probably haven't even seen it, I just uh, realized uh, when I fought the super mutants, so there was way more potential for our crits, especially. And core soup, it just gives us another extra AP regen. Now, I am aware that AP regen plus 6 or plus 3, it's just a random number, it's hard to tell what it exactly means, but you can definitely notice it, uh, see a difference with and without corn soup it's easy to get on the plus side it also keeps your hunger always very high now the only thing you have to keep in mind a little bit what you want is you always want to be uh, not thirsty so how's it called exactly let's drink something well rested and well hydrated yes another extra AP region so yes all you need to know there you can see it well hydrated gives you 25 extra AP region and corn adds another 6 on top so it's nothing out of the ordinary but it's just an easy go to uh, uh, buff that you can add to yourself now that's pretty much everything now when I was playing with this build, there was a ton of things I wanted to say or I did make note of in, in my head that I wanted to say in the video and yeah, just uh, the last overview of the whole build is that this weapon is outperformed by a lot of other weapons and there's no good reason to go for it, but I feel like if you're giving it a chance and if you're a fan of the Alien Blast or energy weapons in general, this completely silent gunslinger with fast firing uh, energy weapons is definitely a very unique playstyle in this game and 
it can actually be a lot of fun i enjoyed it a whole lot i really liked it obviously the aesthetic is just a silly little joke and it's kind of hard to really uh, for me at least to really recreate a good uh looking zeton character if you know what i mean but the alien blaster it really feels nice to use i, I loved it every single minute i was actually kind of surprised and i now hope more than ever that sooner or later bethesda will give us the access to legend more legendary alien blasters just adding them to the loot pool now i'm fairly convinced that a furious one a anti-armor one a junkies or a bloodied one would actually make this a great weapon uh, and i'm not joking i feel like if you can have a bloody faster fire rate alien blaster now i i know there were some around on pc when they were hacked and such but Nowadays with the extra buff and tank killer for pistols, I feel like a bloodied one could actually be a very good usable weapon. Now on that note I wanted to end here and as always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, um, see you next time, bye.